go ahead and call the uh, October 21st meeting to order. And uh, we're very pleased to have Dan back with us. And Dan's very pleased to be back with us. That's the you get David Carmichael, would you be so kind to do this? Yes, sir. All the time that we got on this beautiful fall morning. Tell you, Father, we are thankful. We're thankful for the day. Thank you for you've given us as a gift. And we're thankful for life. Thank you for uh, the ability to seek the truth and the things that we do. And since your wisdom today is with me, I understand that uh, Miss Sue Wilkins' mom passed away. And we just lift her up, lift their family up as uh, they go through this. And also, uh, with Mr. Kidmore, who's recovering from surgery. We just pray for him this morning. Mm -hmm. So we uh, ask your blessings on our families, on our community, and uh, we just seek you in the name that we do in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dave. I believe everybody has a copy of the um, minutes from September 22nd call meeting. Any questions? Make a motion to approve. All right. Second. Okay. All in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The board meeting minutes passes. We also received copies in your packet of the financial statements. Are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the financial statements. Make a motion to approve the financial statements. Okay, we have a second? Second. All right, all in favor of the approval of the uh, financial statements? Uh, Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. At this time, we'd like to turn the floor over to the airport director, Terry. Hello and greetings to the October meeting. I want to start out by introducing two new staff members. We've got David Ross, our primary lineman in the back. We've got Christy Cole, who is a maintenance assistance, assistant. She does all of our cleaning, our painting, um, uh, furniture layout plans, uh, things of that sort. Uh, we're going to take a quick tour over uh, at the end of this meeting of the uh, building that we've just opened, the office building over there. And when you see the lobby of the business center, I think you'll all agree that looks pretty spectacular on a zero budget. Christie's responsible for that. Uh, if you notice downstairs, uh, the display is now running. It's, it's like a little ad display that's going to advertise our uh, fuel prices and, and just have some photographs of the airport. Uh, we discovered that David has uh, some photographic and web experience and capability. Um, and so he's put that together for us, and we'll be maintaining that for us as we go forward. So we're real proud to have them on our staff and um, working for us. Uh, Christy's part-time, David, of course, is full-time. And uh, just wanted y'all to have an opportunity to meet them. Now, y'all get back to work. <laughs> Thank y'all very much. Okay, so fuel services have returned. Um, so we are now managing the fuel farm and FBO services. We'll have a citation jet coming in at some point. Uh, don't know exactly when they'll get here, but um, we might have a disturbance here in the meeting uh, for a few minutes when they taxi in, and we'll all, of course, want to stop and gawk out the window at that. Um, we have um, got our fueler up and running, the 3,000-gallon fuel truck. Um, it's been doing very well. Uh, we got that last Monday and sold over 1,000 gallons of fuel off of it last week. Um, we're not going to sell that much every week, but last week we had the military here doing some training. We had um, a couple of other jets pass through. We had a helicopter doing some power line patrols. Uh, so it was a very busy week last week, and so it was, it was very good that we got the truck um, when we did. Terry, did we have any service issues? Everything what do you mean goes, service issues? I mean, did we, did we get them gassed up? And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah every, nobody had any smooth. issues? And nobody had any <clears throat> issues. We've got some good feedback. Um, I'll tell you that our 24-7 pilot's lounge got pressed into service the week before that. We had a couple passing through from Florida to Illinois, uh, had trouble put down here about dark after everybody had all gone. They wound up spending the night in the 24-7 pilot's lounge, and the next day, um, uh, Johnny, our maintenance facility, uh, got involved. Everybody got involved. We got them taken care of. They wound up having to go back home. 
um, and now they're back. Um, everything's up and running for them. And as soon as the weather clears up between here and Illinois, they're going to be taken off. And they were very appreciative of that. We had another incident last week. We had an FAA um, uh, pilot uh, that flew through here, again, right about dusk. I don't know why these things always happen about dark. Um, but uh, David happened to still be here. It was about 7.30. And he blew a tire, as happens occasionally. He blew a tire on landing. And so we had to... Um, Randy and I both came back up here. We took care of getting him safely uh, towed over to Johnny's. Johnny took care of him the next day, had him back up and running, and he was very appreciative. Left some good feedback on uh, one of the web pages for us. So things are going well from an from an FBO standpoint. We feel like we've got control now of um, of what we need to be doing to run an effective FBO. Terry, yes. Are we allowed to interrupt like this? Sure. <laughs> uh, Kerry had mentioned in an email uh, about kind of a marketing blitz uh, so that people know, you know, we're back in, in service operations. Uh, can we do that? Yes, and we have. So uh, remember that we were a Shell Flag Airport. We are now a Phillips 66 branded airport. And you'll see that the sign out there is bare at the moment. That sign has been ordered. It's been shipped. Um, Dean at FL Graphics is going to be installing that probably toward the end of this week. But Shell uh, has sent us uh, a web page or a, a list of web pages, um, most of which I've never heard of before. I've been in aviation all my life and had never heard of most of these web pages. But this is the collection of all of the web pages that Philip 66 knows about. And so uh, we gave David Ross the assignment of going through and making sure we were updated on every one of those pages. And so we are now listed as the FBO with our contact information, um, all of the pertinence uh, of the services that we provide. So that's one marketing blitz that we have done. And of course, their marketing never ends. Uh, we have gotten with um, Robert Krauss, uh, him and his wife maintain our webpage, as you all know. And uh, they're going to update our web page right after the first of the year. So uh, our web page will be modernized and, and reflect us now as the uh, FBO manager here. We've already taken down the link uh, for Paulden Jet Center, which was dead anyway. They had already terminated their website, so it just went to a, uh, to a, a dead page. Uh, so we've corrected that, and we'll be adding our own uh, web content there. So we're doing some things marketing-wise, and we'll continue to do more as we go forward. Uh, if you noticed coming in, you saw this really big airplane sitting down on the ground over here without wings. That's the F-14 Tomcat. There's, it there's is now a crane here. out there hanging wings on it, right? Yeah, they're, they're out there right now putting it back together. It should be together by Friday. Um, that's pretty ambitious. We'll see if they get it done between now and then, but um, that is going to dominate the petting zoo over there now. You know, you thought the BTD destroyer was big. Uh, the F-14 is going to dwarf it and pretty much fill up uh, the remainder of that space. So we're real happy to see that come. Can we and Tom Cruise to come by for some photos? <laughs> yeah, people have already been asking for rides, so <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, it will be an impressive um, display piece out here. Uh, last weekend, the museum moved all of their inside display gear uh, from Rome to here. And at the end of this meeting, I'm going to ask us to uh, reconvene briefly over in the business center. I want everybody to see that. Uh, many of y'all have seen it during various phases of construction. It's finished now. The public is invited. We want to bring y'all uh, with us as we go over there. And then we'll, uh, we'll basically dismiss from there and all go home or back to work. Um, but you'll be able to see the, um, the museum in its state of unpacking um, and the business center there with the flight school um, having moved in and settled in now in our designated examiner. Um, of course, the 24-7 pilot's lounge was already open. Uh, so it's, it's all looking really good over there. Um, and to that end, I want to thank the Board of Commissioners. They contributed $20,000 toward the construction of that space, um, which was much needed for us to, to get all of that done and in the first class shape that it's in. I think everybody will agree when you look at it that um, this was a very good investment 
for the airport and personally, I thank the, the Board of Commissioners for showing the support that they did in that. Um, I will be uh, providing a quarterly update to the Board of Commissioners at their November 10th meeting. So you are all invited to that. That's just their regular uh, bi-monthly uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. And remember that we periodically are invited to uh, speak and give an update on the airport. And so that's planned for that date. Uh, in the agenda, you're going to notice that I'm asking you to authorize a public hearing. I sent to each of y'all the uh, handbook from the FAA concerning public involvement in airport development. So uh, to that end, uh, we want to have a public hearing to invite uh, both our aviation community and the non-flying public to come in and, and have uh, almost like a town hall uh, but it'll be a town hall slash public hearing, so it'll be a formal meeting, but um, I'm not going to set any timeline, I'm not going to set any bounds on uh, topics of discussion as far as uh, what people want to talk about concerning the development of this airport, uh, but it'll be a good opportunity for uh, public involvement in our direction that we're going in uh, going forward. And this will be basically the strategic plan that y'all approved uh, I think it was last month or the month before. And so uh, we can always tweak that. Um, you know, us having approved it doesn't mean uh, that we're not accepting input. It just means that now it's our, our official um, plan that we can now seek involvement from the community uh, around. And then uh, we'll also be doing the same thing for uh, the Board of Commissioners. And we will be asking them to endorse that plan probably at their December meeting so that both co-sponsors can be represented to the FAA as being on the same page. That's very important um, for the FAA and they've put emphasis on that, especially for us, uh, given our, our recent history. So that will be on uh, November 17th, again, assuming that y'all approve that when we get to that in the agenda. I also sent to y'all this, um, this short economic development report from GDOT. GDOT did one of these for every public airport in Georgia as well as one for aviation in general in Georgia and I'll draw your attention to uh, page two on this. Uh, this is not our estimate, this is GDOT's estimate and they estimate our annual economic impact to our county and the region as 7.2 million dollars and some people might say well how can it be that big? Well uh, we've got flying tigers out here that are uh, generating over $100,000 a year in economic activity directly here at the airport in their, their flight school. We've got Johnny Jenkins doing probably a quarter of a million dollars worth of business a year in his aviation maintenance facility. We've got all of us as full-time employees that work here at the airport. And then you've got all of the indirect activities, the construction activities that happen here. Um, uh, so Home Depot, Walmart, um, uh, Dollar General, several other companies fly through here fairly regularly in a normal year. Now, they're not flying right now because of COVID, um, but for the period that this study covered, um, companies like that pass through here fairly often. And I've uh, commented before that this um, Minute Clinic and all of the health-related things that took place at the Dallas 120 Walmart was the prototype for the entire nation. And the economic impact of that project alone was pretty big. Uh, the owner of the electrical company who's installing the, the wiring at the new Costco building, major contract for Paulding County, flew through here the other day. Um, as often is the case, uh, he gets out and he goes off and does his business and leaves the pilot here to fend for himself. So uh, the staff and I took him to lunch and had a very, uh, a very good lunch um, with him. And they're from Texas, so of course we took him to barbecue and we actually got him to, to brag about some Georgia barbecue, which we thought was pretty big. So um, those are some examples. Gary, you pro uh, have we published that? At least for public consumption, at least, and, and, and giving a link to that on our website. Here. I think you're talking about this document. I'm talking about no, the, G, the, G the, the G dot document. document. I mean, no, I but that's an excellent we idea. We need to do that. Everybody needs to. Everybody needs to have access to that information to, to understand exactly what we're doing out here. Excellent and, and, point. 
And Yolanda can now do that. The first one of the first changes that Robert Krauss made to the web page was giving her the ability to link documents up there directly without having to go through them. So there's your first document to post. So I'll email that to you, Yolanda, and we'll get that up there. That's that's an excellent idea, Dan. Um, and then, of course, the thing that I'm proudest of is ad valorem taxes that this airport's directly going to contribute to the county. This year is going to exceed half a million dollars, and that's huge for the county. Two-thirds of that go to the school board. Make sure Amen, they know brother. that, Dan. <laughs> um, and we don't have to educate a single kid for that $300,000 contribution. <laughs> so um, this airport is contributing in a big way to the economy of Paulding County right now. So um, don't let anybody fool you or kid you or lie to you that it's not happening. It is happening, and we're very proud of that, and I just want to draw attention to it. And Ms. Yolanda, when you put that out there, make sure that, you, that, that, it, it, that it's clearly marked that this is an independent study by GDOT, not a, an airport document that's been, I think it's important for the public when they go see that to realize that. So it right on the front page. Well, you know what. <laughs> but yes. Okay, um, and then uh, finally in the way of uh, announcements, I want to make sure everybody is aware of the Chambers event that's going to be here on November 14th. Everybody is invited. This is the Hearts for Heroes event. Um, Jody has been putting a lot of uh, planning into this, and I think it's going to be outstanding. It's going to probably be the largest outdoor event, I would say, in Paulding County this year. Would you agree, Stacy? And... Um, we're hearing all kinds of good things about um, people who are planning to participate in that. And so I encourage y'all to all be here if possible. That's it. Terry, could you speak a little bit to fuel sales, what we've been doing so far, just to give people an idea of where we're at? I just happen to have the numbers. Absolutely. I will be happy to do that. So we have been selling fuel for 21 days. Well, we haven't sold any today yet, so 20, 20 days. Um, we have sold uh, right at 2,500 gallons of 100 low lead and almost 1,500 gallons of Jet A. And again, we were not really selling Jet A because Jet A is normally <clears throat> sold off of the truck because these normally go into helicopters and larger airplanes that are not well suited for self-service. So really, we only sold 100 low lead um, from Tuesday of last week until today, so uh, basically a week. Um, and we've sold about 1,200 gallons there. So if you annualize that out, that's going to be somewhere around uh, 60,000 gallons a year, which is about what we thought we would do in this COVID year, remember, when we were going through that analysis. So, um, so I'm not disappointed in that. We lost a lot of business here for that two months that we were without fuel, and it was two primary flying months, um, August given, and September. Have you given any contemplation to how that's going to affect our operating budgetary? I mean, are we going to be able to offset the two months of fees that we weren't collecting on the fuel, the, the, the small amount on the fuel, on the, are we going to be able to offset on the... I believe so. You know, this, this is kind of a new, um, a new deal for us in the sense that I can't predict fuel sales. I can predict it based on what we did last year, but that's really about all I can do. And so assuming that we carry the same fuel cells going forward and that everybody gets back to flying sometime shortly after the first of the year, um, then we're going to be just fine. Um, if uh, we still if the economy in. tanks <clears throat> and people stop flying, it's going to be rough. I mean, that's the honest we truth. We still should be in better shape selling our own fuel than we would have been just taking a cut of what was being sold. Yes, right? but uh, remember now we are paying the payroll for that that they were paying and uh, we've now lost the $4,000 a month uh, rental income that was coming from what they were renting for the fuel farm and the space downstairs. So we have to sell about $6,000 worth just to get back to even every month, okay? Which we've done this month. So, you know, we're, we're going to be okay, like I say. And you've only been added a week. And we've only, well, with Jet A a week, but 100 low lead for three weeks. <clears throat> but we have so, better control of our brand. Yes. Yes. I think that's the, the yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Which hopefully should draw some more. Well, anyway. let me give you an example. By, by being in control of our brand, we can set our fuel prices. 
we've dropped the price of 100 low lead $1 a gallon, and we're still making, making money at that price. And uh, what I did is I did a survey of everybody north of I-20, and I wanted to match the low price for 100 low lead for everybody in Georgia north of I-20. Calhoun is currently selling 100 low lead uh, self-service for $3.49 a gallon, so that's what I set our 100 low lead at, and it's working. We're beginning now to see some McCollum traffic, some Cartersville traffic coming through here. Folks, it used to fly over us to get to uh, Carrollton, which is usually, historically, the lowest price gas in our region. They're now stopping here. So we're going to see that continue to increase as we go forward. Um, our, uh, our brand is um, very competitive in price. There are six Phillips stations uh, within 40 miles of us, and they pay the exact same uh, per gallon that we do. Uh, the Shell stations and the other uh, minor branded stations are very, very competitive uh, in price, so we're going to be fine. Is our base price, price going to fluctuate, or have we, have we get, so will we fluctuate with the base price? Is that how it works? It, we will fluctuate with two things. One, how much are we having to pay for the fuel when we buy it? And number two, what do we have to price it at to be competitive? Got it. So we will look at that Delta every day yeah, okay. and see where we are. Uh, fuel prices at airports do not do change. Do you do that daily? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but fuel prices at airports do not change the way they do at QT and racetrack. Okay? That was my question. Right. They tend to change monthly um, because that's about the tempo at which most airports take on fuel. But I can monitor it in about 30 seconds by looking at AirNav and ForeFlight. And, you know, you just click on the compare fuel around me and it brings up a map and shows you the fuel prices for a 50 mile radius around you. I mean, it's Very that nice. quick. Um, so it's not, and so we just make sure we're not headache, getting out You're not line. having to go out and do a whole bunch of leg work to get it. No, it's very easy. Okay. Very easy. One other question. Would you happen to know, and maybe talk at this point, the breakdown base versus transient on your what you're selling? I can tell you that because we captured the tail number of every sale. Right. I don't have that in front of me. What's your guess? But just anecdotally, I'd say about, well, for 100 low lead, it's 100% off base. No, okay. tra no transit? Off base. It's all transit. It's all transit. transit. Really? Yes, because um, BB1 is not flying right now. They're, they're staying home during the COVID experience. We don't have any other jet breathers. Uh, jet burners here at the airport. So all of that 1,500 gallons was transient. Um, two thirds of it was military. So um, we can now take the air card. Okay. So Carrie, you mentioned that. Yeah, Carrie uh, can speak to how important that is. Um, that's a capability the jet center did not have, and so we can now uh, directly sell to the military on their their government their P -card. credit card P card. Yeah. yeah. And so we can't do it through the fuel farm because their requirement is everybody has to sign, okay? So as long as we're here and we can, um, we can run their credit card through our credit card reader, then we can accept that credit card and we can service the military directly. That's a big deal for us. Most of the military crews aren't into self-service anyway. It's just not yeah. something in their operations they generally want. They qualified person refueling airplanes, so that so that works just fine. But we're yeah. going to try to get the word out too to some units around here that we have that ability now because it's something we pushed the jet center to do for years and years, and they never were able to make it happen. Terry got it done in about a week or less, and so it's a big it's a big thing to be able to sell directly to these military. Make units. it easy for the military to buy from you. They're going to buy from you. Yeah. Right, and if we. You know, if these guys are looking, Dave will tell you, these guys are just looking for a good place to hang out for a minute, something that's comfortable, maybe a snack or so. And if they spend an hour or so, maybe they can take the car and get a, you know, a barbecue sandwich or something and then brief up and get out of it. It's a car I don't have, so that's going to be my next task is we need a crew car. <laughs> we do need a crew car whenever Terry gets to that. We absolutely do need one. It just goes hand in hand with bringing yeah. these guys in and good customer service. But, uh, but yeah, it's, these military units be a great source of a lot of fuel cells yeah. now. But I'm very upbeat. Things are going great. Um, I think y'all will agree when you see the tour here in a few minutes that things are looking really good around here. Um, any other questions for me? You have a breakdown on the 100 low end? <clears throat> breakdown in what way? Base transient. Half and half, roughly. Yeah, probably <laughs> half and half. So um, to that end, uh, I do know this because we've issued 
what's called the proprietary card. That's the white card carry, you know, that um, yeah. uh, you can hand to individual owners so that they can not have to process through a credit card. And we've issued one of those two Flying Tigers. Flying Tigers actually, you know, the, the Grumman burns six gallons an hour. So, so they'll go out for a lesson and they need four and a half, five gallons, you know. Um, but you do that enough times during the day, and voila, they're our biggest gas customer. So uh, they have really been flying a lot this month. Uh, the weather's been beautiful, um, and so we've sold, I don't know, $2,000, $3,000 worth to them already. Uh, so they're going to be an excellent customer for us. But we're getting a lot of transient as well. So just roughly, I mean, judging by... Um, what I see going across the flight line, it's about half and half. Okay. Chair, quick question. I'd like to use um, the director's um, report here to segue into a word about co-sponsors. You know, we've talked about improvement of co-sponsors and it's really never been better than it is right now. It's great. Uh, however, the connectivity, as we've been having actually two meetings a month, uh, in addition to this, with some of our, our staff. And so I want to introduce somebody that you probably already know, our operations manager, Scott Green, who's here and will be here at all our meetings uh, to provide that connectivity in projects that we may need to do in, in our uh, airport layout plan. Uh, you know, you think, well, you've got the chairman at all the meetings, so he knows everything wrong. There's just too much to digest in here. And so we realized that we needed to, to have an additional staff member a civil engineer from uh, Southern Tech, not Southern Tech, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, that I've known for a long time. So uh, just very, think very highly of Scott, and I know he'll be a benefit uh, to this co sponsorship relationship. And Scott and I, and Jacob and Chris, y'all know Jacob and Chris from Holt Engineering. We're, we've got a meeting scheduled for right after this meeting where we're going to sit down and go over the technical details. Of, um, of our strategic plan and make sure Scott is fully up speed on, um, on all the dirt that's got to move. I'm a double E, not a civil engineer, so I'm at a disadvantage with these guys, but I can flip pages and, and go get coffee while they're talking about the nitty gritty details. And, and I'm leaning on Scott very heavily as we go forward to help this airport be everything that it can be. So Dave, I'm, I'm delighted um, that y'all have made him available to us and look forward to him getting more involved with what's going on here. Because I know he doesn't have anything else to do other than, other than this. Rarely will he go to executive session, uh, which is about litigation and personnel and stuff, but if there's something real estate related or something where we need to have him in there, then we're able to invite him in for his expertise. Yep. Any other questions for me? Kerry, did you have something? I did, but I had a senior moment. I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that gets worse. I, before you step away, I want to say one thing. I think that having a public hearing, and we're going to address that in this motion, but I want I, I want you to, I think it's commendable that you've, and, and this came from Terry. I, I'm assuming you had some input into this, but, but you put together the agenda for this public meeting. You're the one that wants to get in front of the folks of the county, tell them exactly what the plan is and make sure that everybody's on the same page right. before we move forward right. so we don't have any more of what we had over the last four or five That's years. Right. And uh, I appreciate that very much. I think the transparency is going to help drive the ball down the field much, much quicker. I won't guarantee everybody's going to be on the same page. I will guarantee that everybody <clears throat> will know what the page is. There you go. All right. There you go. Thank you. Good Thank you, Terry. All right, next up, we'll entertain a motion authorizing the CEO to request FAA authorization to apply the $105,000 obtained from the A&P school property release be applied to the Dallas sewer system extension to the airport. Do you want to? This one needs some explanation. Yes. So you're all aware of all of this, but you may not be aware of, of all the intricate pieces and how it plays together. So I want to explain that for a minute. Um, so that we all know what we're voting on here. So the FAA has approved the release of the property for the AMP school. That is a huge event for us. Dave gets a lot of the credit for working that all the way to the Washington, D.C. level. Um, the, the elected officials um, that represent this county have worked very hard. We finally got it done. That's a big deal. The FAA paid for the property here. 
we, Paulding County, bought the land and then applied for a grant from the FAA, which they awarded, which reimbursed us for what it cost for the property that the airport sits on, all 770 plus or minus acres, okay? So that gives them a seat at the table on whether we can sell property, what we do with the money when we sell property, and so forth. So they have approved the sale of this property based on an appraisal from an independent appraiser that has been approved by what's called an independent appraisal checker. So there are actually two levels of appraisals that have taken place from independent third parties, and that value was established at $105,000. Okay, we didn't set the price of that land, the FAA didn't set the price of that land, and the school didn't set the price of the land. An independent appraiser and someone reviewing his work have determined that the value of that property is $105,000. Now the FAA doesn't want the money back. That's, that's not how it works. They want the airport to move forward. So their rule when property is released that they have paid for is that money must be applied within a five year period to an FAA approved construction project that moves the airport forward. At their last meeting, the Board of Commissioners approved paying for that land. So they've actually bought the land from the airport and they will be turning that land over to the Technical College System of Georgia and that gives them a whole lot of say in what's going to happen to that money which they already have anyway because they're co-sponsor of this airport. All right, And since that money came from something that is benefiting the school, um, informally in talking to some of y'all and the Board of Commissioners, we all agree that this money should somehow also benefit the school as well as the airport. And so the thing that we need the most in order to see the school move forward at this point is sewage. Because the sewer line for this airport runs right in front of this building to a commercial septic tank, to a, a, a small uh, lift station. It gets piped as gray water across the runway to about a two acre field line that's on the other side of the runway. That will not support the sewage requirement for a 50,000 square foot building with 100 students in it. So our system will be obsolete the day the school opens. The school can't afford to run sewage from there to about 1,500 feet over here where the city of Dallas sewer line ends. Um, the city of Dallas spent about $3 million right after the airport opened running sewage basically to the edge of our property, but they couldn't run across this, um, this fill right here where we've been trying to fill the creek in and, and uh, get started with our development plan here. Uh, so it had to stop about 1,500 feet from here. So what this motion addresses is this motion addresses that we want to ask the FAA, and we're going to ask the Board of Commissioners to endorse the same plan, which they informally already have, where we petition the FAA at an appropriate time that this $105,000 be applied to extending that sewer line in the direction of the school and the airport so that both benefit. The FAA won't pay for sewage to go to the school, but they will pay for sewage to go to the airport, and that gets it over halfway to the new school building, and now they just have to pay for the sewer run from their building to a manhole that will be located almost directly behind me. So that's what this motion is about. It's, it's you recognizing that we want to apply this set of funds to the construction of a sewer line which will benefit both the airport and the school. And then once I get that same endorsement from the Board of Commissioners and once we mature this project to the point where we're ready to go forward and execute it, I can start the paperwork process to get FAA approval for that money to be applied to sewage for the airport and the school. Does that make clear sense to everybody? So moved. <laughs> Any questions about that? All right. So we have, we have, a, we motion. have a motion. So moved. And so you second that? Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries.
Next motion we have is what uh, Terry uh, uh, alluded to earlier was uh, authorizing the CEO to conduct a public hearing, inviting the public input to airport development plan, which we talked about at our last meeting. Um, the public hearing will be held at the Pauling Northwest Atlanta Airport, 7 p.m. on November 17th. We have a motion. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion with inter close session for litigation in real estate. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We shall return. We will uh, report back in that um, no action was taken, taken uh, during the closed session discussing litigation in real estate. We will move on to. Uh, Entertain a motion approving short-term lease of 31 <coughs> office building second floor to Westridge Church for the period of October 31st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Is there a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Uh, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. <coughs> motion passes. The next po motion uh, regarding the lease is the lease modification for the Flying Tigers Flight School. Do we have a uh, So motion? moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. And the third lease. Entertain a motion to approve a lease for Tacoa Group LLC, Matt Guzelli, for terminal building, second floor office space. We have a motion? Second. All right, we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the lease modification for Faith Community Church. No, you're looking at the out of date so agenda. Yeah. We tabled that one. Oh. Excuse me. Brought mine from home. And is that should be it, right? Yeah, for comments, and comments, and questions. We'll open at this point for any comments or questions. And I'd like to just elaborate a little bit on the November 14th event, if I may. Um, that event is called Our Hearts for Heroes, and thank you, Terry, for mentioning it. And we would love the community support. Uh, this is an event we put together to honor all our active uh, military veterans and any public safety um, officer or uh, EMA uh, worker in Paulding. And it's just a beautiful spotlight. I think it's coming at a great time uh, where we're really working to show unity amongst our county and our community. This is being held in partnership with the City of Dallas, the City of Hiram, the Board of Commissioners. Uh, we're partnering with the Museum of Flight, Pirate Training, as well as Post Legion 111. And we are going to start the event off with a big motorcade that'll be leaving Veterans Park, uh, proceeding down into the airport where it'll turn into a parade style entrance. And then we will, upon completion of that, we'll have music, we'll have a veteran spotlight when veteran owned businesses or public safety owned businesses will be spotlighted in um, an expo style setup, as well as a bike show, car show, uh, some food trucks. So please come out that day. It's just a wonderful opportunity. Uh, Say hello. Uh, we're still working on that. Yes, we are, we are hoping to implement a flyer with the Museum of Flight. We'll also have some static dis uh, displays as well as the museum being open that day. So I think it's a great way to bring people out, make them aware of the beautiful asset we have here, as well as the Museum of Flight and the pieces and, and how important they are to have now in our community. Uh, the event starts about 10.30 with the motorcade entering. We'll conclude around 4. I uh, want to assure everybody that we took special precautions to have an emergency management plan following the COVID state guidelines. So um, please come join us. It'll be a great day. And that's the 14th, correct? The 14th, correct. From about 10.30 to 4. Great. Anything else? I'll tell you, if you help me with this, we will not adjourn. We will recess and reconvene at the... Business Center. Business Center. That's the center door. Center door. And we will uh, adjourn from there once we uh, finish our tour and have our further discussion. So with that, we'll go ahead and adjourn to the, uh, or if you don't do a motion to recess. Oh, we got to do a motion to recess. Uh, do I have a motion to recess? So, so moved. Oh.
I'll second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> we will adjourn. Do we need a motion to come out of recess?